Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for July 9th, 2020. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense Podcast. Uh, I'm Carl, and I'm joined with Mod. And this week we're going to be talking about the W, the Western Digital uh, File NAS security issues, and also also we'll be talking about something that all of us will, are involved with, which is the Internet of Things. Okay. So let's begin and see where we can learn this week. Good. So let's uh, let's start with the uh, Internet of Things. This happened actually based on personal experience. I just uh, upgraded my Wi-Fi network and I wanted to sell my old routers and my my old the old the mesh network devices that I had. And I started thinking about it. Okay, I can get rid of this. And I went online and I started, you know, going on different apps that uh, people sell things on. And I found people selling uh, a lot of uh, internet, the internet of things devices, things like cameras, uh, Echo Dot, and Google speakers, Google Minis, etc. And I got to thinking on using my knowledge. So, okay, what if I reset this device? What would happen? Would would people still be able to get my information? With the amount of people that are using the Internet of Things now, we all have Ring Cams, we all have Alexas, we all have Googles, we all have Series. And I said, okay, what if I want to get rid of one of, one of my devices? If I do a simple factory reset, the manufacturer says it will remove my personal information. But I also have my knowledge in, 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 in uh, information technology that tells me otherwise. So I started doing some research. And I found an article that actually worded uh, exactly that. It's thinking about selling your Echo Dot or any IoT device, read this first. And it intrigued me, and I, I thought this would be something excellent to bring to our listeners' attention. Uh, one of the things that uh, a group of researchers did in uh, Northwestern University is that they went and they purchased almost 200 devices, uh, different Amazon devices. They went, uh, they bought them used, they bought them on uh, whether it was Amazon, uh, they bought them on eBay, they bought them at different uh, uh, flea markets. And they decided, they said, okay, let's go into these devices and see if we can uh, get some sensitive information, some uh, PII, personally identifying information, off those devices. Now, one of the things that we know about the memory that is inside those devices that we use every day is that there is a way that we can increase the number of times that you can uh, erase and fill that memory. So you put new information on it. One of manufacturers came up with this technology that can increase the number of times that we can erase those blocks, certain blocks on the uh, on the memory. And he said, for us to increase that number, what's going to happen is we are going to devalidate the data. So, for example, on your computer, if you go and you work, you work on this document and you turn it into your boss and now it's already saved in your Google Drive or you saved as an email attachment. And you don't want it on your computer anymore. You have a small hard drive or it's already saved in the cloud. You say, okay, let me delete it. What happens to it? We all know it goes into the recycling bin. Okay. I can go into the recycle bin and I hit empty. When I empty the recycle bin, now I feel like I have freed up memory, which is true. You have freed up some random access memory. But what happened in reality is those files that or that, that Word document that you deleted, it just became invisible to you. Now, there are software out there that we can go, and it's called forensic software, that we can go and we can rebuild that data that you think was deleted because it was not deleted. It was actually in there. It looks like 
bits in there, bits of data that we can rebuild and get all and rebuild that text file. But we can do the same thing with all that information on your Alexa, your Echo Dot, your Amazon, your any, any Amazon device. We can rebuild all that information and the information that is saved on that data, even uh, the, the data that is saved on that on that device is the information that supposedly have been reset, have been wiped during the reset. Well, as we learn, even during the reset, what happens is all that information, a lot of it is still in there and we can rebuild those bits. So how can I, one of the things that, that, that um, the researchers did is that they were able to use a, a software called Autopsy. And what the software does is one of the forensic software that you can pull some information off of an old device or off any device. And they were able to pull things like uh, Wi-Fi passwords, MAC addresses, and based on the MAC address, they were able to pull the person's actual physical address and IP address. Now, this was done as a research, and you have to have some skill to get into those devices whether hardware skills or software skills but how do you know that that device that you sell won't end up in the hand of a person that has the skill and the the ability to harm you and the want and, and wanted yeah. to harm you you know one of the things that we used to or we still do now if we want to hone our skills is we'll go to goodwill or we'll go to we'll go to a flea market and pick up any old type of network device and see we call it research and we see we do research and we see how much information we can pull. Now we don't use that information for anything. That information now I own, it's public, I purchased it. But that doesn't mean the guy next door is not gonna do that. That doesn't mean that companies that buy those devices in millions and millions of numbers and get shipped overseas, they won't fall in the hands of a wrong actor and use that information to harm you. Now, how can I protect myself from something like this? Well, if it was me, I wouldn't even sell a device that I use. Any network device that has any information, I wouldn't sell it, I wouldn't recycle it. Now, that may not be an option for some of us, um, but for the time, I mean, there are ways you can mitigate that, that uh, somebody stealing information, but some of those things are very technical, like for example, encrypting the partition that has all, you, all your information on it. It's not something that the average person can do. Now, those researchers actually said that they reached out to Amazon, and Amazon actually acknowledged this problem. And, of course, they did the Amazon thing, and they said, you know, we are aware of that issue, but the security of our devices is top priority. Yeah. Um, now, one of the things that they recommend you do is you do a factory reset, and you deregister de -register your device, uh, before you recycle it or resell it or or, or uh, use it. Uh, one of the things that you cannot access is your Amazon account password or payment card information, but but anybody with a little bit of social engineering skills can use the information that is left on that device to get exactly. more information out of it. Exactly. Uh, the, mo the device that actually had the, the worst problem was the uh, Fire TV. Um, uh, the uh, the second was the was the Am the Echo Dot, the, the smaller device. Um, now, what Amazon is, said they would they would do is that they said they would that they are act, they're, they're working on on mitigations. And one of the things that they said is that the attacks require the attacker to have physical possession of the device and specialized training. Well, we can just buy the device from eBay or we can buy it from a flea market. And the specialized training, what makes you think that, I mean, it, people that, there's people that can find videos online and do all those things. And yeah. the tools that are used, the soldering iron, and, and, you know, that's pretty much all you need. Um, now, also, another another thing to point out is that he said about 70% of all the devices the bot used were actually not reset. They were not factory reset. So that's that shows, you know, we have a huge human factor. Yeah. In, in 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 losing our our information, and that's that's the first thing you do is go ahead and remove your information, reset your device. This will make it not possible for some an average person to get that information until Amazon fixes that issue. Yeah. Um, one of one of the things that Amazon said is that the best thing you can do is you send your Amazon device to Amazon, 
as a trade-in and they can guarantee that your information will be completely white now that to me that doesn't sound like very fair because we know what those trade-in prices are yeah so <laughs> it's up you know it's it'll be up to each and each one of us to decide okay what is what is worth it to me you know protect my information or go make the extra you know 80 to 100 dollars off the old device um it's it's really it's really up to each person and now that you're protected and you're armed with this knowledge um you know it's it's a good starting point for more research on this on this issue yeah i also saw research something similar with they collected like a couple hundred cell phones like smartphones and they're seeing the same things happening where people were able to get information off these devices even after they thought they were wiped and they were getting photos and contact information and all sorts of things so I think it's anything that can store information you have to be very careful with because it's not just the IOT device it's even the smartphones that we carry around and how much information more information is on those than the echo dot that basically records every right. conversation you have too right right um uh, one of the things that that is um important when it comes to phone is the amount of encryption that the phones yeah. have is much better than the iot's right so we know apple's encryption we know uh, uh android has really good encryption as well mm -hmm. uh, but that takes us again okay I, if i know you 90 percent of us use our birthday yeah. to unlock our phone if i already know that i got your phone mm -hmm. and you know so, sometimes there are there are ways to mitigate you know to go to get around that when, when you get an image of that phone you're able to get around that encryption sometimes you just gotta yeah. have really expensive software to, to do that yep all right so we're going to move on to the next topic all right so Western Digital has just recently been in the news for two different things. One thing is one of their older devices, known as the MyBook Live, has been in the news because now people are able to do a factory reset remotely on your device, even without your permission. This flaw was due to someone finding out that there was a hardwired account credential with no password on there so all the hacker had to do is find out what that username was and find out what IP address that, that that thing was connected to and was able to send a command to reset the the uh, my book and what's even worse is this device has stopped being supported in 2015 and people can still purchase this device today and there is no workaround for this so people have lost lost everything that they connected to this device like home movies photos personal documents all gone luckily when uh, Western Digital was pushed on this I on this uh, issue they were willing to offer uh, data recovery so they they could try to recover your data if you are affected by this and so the question comes down to what can you do to prevent this from happening I think the only thing you can do is to make sure that this device does not get out onto the open internet um, it's kind of disturbing how these devices even though they stopped their support in 2015 that are still being sold as new today so i guess another thing you could do is just before you purchase your device just do a little research to see okay is this device supported by the manufacturer if it's not then probably consider buying a different device or if, or if it's been on the market for Oh, like four or five years most likely it's going to end support real soon so probably shouldn't buy this device but if you've already purchased it again just make sure that it doesn't go out into the open internet to and that could be as simple as probably going into some of the settings and uh, turning off any remote access features that you have on there 
if that's not possible, then most likely you'd have to go through fire, some firewall settings in your router to just block any network traffic from that particular port that it uses to reach out to the internet so that it won't be able to be accessible outside your network. And the second issue that was pretty similar to it is there for the MyCloud uh, devices, the MyCloud OS 3 has a similar flaw to it where people are able to remote into your your NAS, your network attached storage, and delete files remotely. Uh, Western Digital said the only mitigation for that is to upgrade to the MyCloud OS 5. But unfortunately, if you do that, you do miss some of the features, the remote features that you might need. But it's kind of like a trade-off. Like, do you have the features and risk having your data exposed and compromised? Or do you go for a more secure route and make sure that your data is actually safe? Now, so, so just to clarify, the way somebody is able to access that, that device, he said, is through, there's a back door, and that back yeah. door is, there's an admin account that was put in all of these devices when they were manufactured. Correct. And it has no password in there, so, and there's no way to change it, because it's hardwired into no And there's nope. no way to disable that account. Nope. Okay. In the uh, live book, no, but in the... My cloud, if you upgrade to OS 5, that account is removed from your device. But for the uh, My Book Live, there's no way around it. And, and you know, another thing that, is, you know, so what you mentioned is somebody was able to reset all that information, do a factory reset. Mm -hmm. But can somebody take that a step further? For, now, just, for the some, uh, for example, yeah, go ahead. Can somebody use that after they reset that device? Can they use that same device to get into my network and pivot into something else? It is possible because a lot of these my books were being infected by uh, what's known as uh, zombie bots, which would go into like a big zombie network computer, like different connected computers to launch attacks on other computers. So what they would do is they'd use your device, instead of using their device and all their resources to attack someone else, they would put this like little malware on hundreds and thousands of different devices and have all those devices attack that target all at once to overwhelm it and to take it offline. So if they're able to do that, I'm sure they'll be able to pivot and get into your network because they have access into you the device, I'm sure, and they could put malware in there, which was proven by the my book, so it wouldn't be any further for them just to take some malware that starts in there and then works their way into the whole network, and then they have your entire network and everything that's connected to it. And also, what I noticed when uh, when I read that article is that the CVE was discovered in 2018, and then what yeah. you mentioned is that it, they stopped supporting in 2015, which means the product's probably at least you know five years before that. So yeah, it took, however, you know, almost eight years, ten years for mm -hmm. later after it was manufactured, and somebody was still digging and yeah. finding in things that they can use to hack, you know, hack mm -hmm. those devices. So. You know, it doesn't matter how old your device gets, always update it, always patch it. There's security patches, security updates all the time. Don't disregard those. Those yeah. are very important. And if the device stops getting support, then that's it. Consider consider replacing it if you can. And if you are purchasing, just do a little extra research to see, okay, is this device supported by the manufacturer? And when was it first manufactured? So like you said, you can still get these my book lives through Walmart, through Amazon, through everywhere, still today, as if it's brand new. And you'll be open to this exploit, which will never get patched because they're no longer supporting it. 
Alright. Alright. So like I said, just do a little bit of research and be diligent. And make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Because this could easily be researched. Just go into the manufacturer's website and look up the model number that you have that you're considering buying and see, okay, is it in their supported doc? Do they even, do they even advertise it on their website? If they don't, most likely they don't want you to buy it because it's not being supported. And a lot of times some, uh, some stores would put these kind of devices on sale and you think, oh, getting a good deal, but they're just trying to flush out all the old inventory so that the new stuff comes in and they make more money off of those. And then you're stuck with something that'll be vulnerable to attacks and all your data is in the hands of hackers. Perfect. Yep, I think I think that'll conclude this week's episode. And if you like what you hear, you can give it a positive review. And you can see us on all social medias, YouTube, Facebook, and Odyssey. You can also go to our simple cyberdefense.com. And we we'll hope to hear if from you for the next episode. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.